Hello, my name is Jessica Lucas and I'm a third year social work student at the University of the West of Scotland in Dumfries. I've recently been with the rest of my class to, for a visit at Dumfries Prison, where we were met by the prison governor and were also taken on a guided tour by two prison officers. Due to personally never having experience going into a prison before, I was initially a little apprehensive. However, I felt that overall, the prison experience in itself was extremely insightful and informative. Staff were very friendly and open towards interactive discussions with myself and other classmates. For example, we asked about prisoners' access to televisions due to society's perceptions of prisons as often being too soft within the United Kingdom. However, we were informed that research conducted has shown a significant decrease in the presence of mental health problems occurring in prisons and suicide attempts taking place when televisions are accessible to prisoners. To begin the tour, staff originally began by discussing the history of the prison. The prison itself was built in 1863 as a local prison to serve the catchment area of South West Scotland. In 1951, it was converted to the use of a borstal, and in 1965, to a young offenders institution. As a result, Dumfries Prison invests a large amount of money in upkeeping the prison itself. Currently, Dumfries Prison serves the local courts of Dumfries and Galloway. The prison provides a national mainstream facility which separates short-term offenders from long-term offenders. Both groups are separated due to the nature of their offence. Short-term convicted male offenders may be retained in Dumfries or transported to another establishment according to the length of their sentence, which could be anywhere from a few months to a few years. Um, Long-term prisoners in Dumfries prison often include those found guilty of a sexual offence. Thus, one of the biggest challenges for prison workers is to minimise risks of reoffending through processes such as desistance theory and by also gradually rehabilitating prisoners back into the wider community. One of the biggest challenges when reintegrating prisoners back into the community is often attached to stigma and labelling theory. During our visit, Staff explained how prisoners found it difficult upon release when seeking things such as employment. Due to very few companies overlooking past offences, ex-prisoners are often left disheartened when searching for jobs and so are stigmatised and oppressed by the community. Additionally, they may become very isolated and without appropriate support in place may result back to reoffending on a long-term basis. Although not perfect, the prison does work hard to create community links. For example, the prison currently provides a variety of programmes which are voluntary for prisoners to attend. These are programmes which are highly intensive and provide prisoners with essential life skills in the aims of helping them with their transition from prison life back into life within the community. Examples of a programme offered to prisoners include care, which identifies groups of individuals who may benefit from anger management training. Other programmes may include victim empathy workshops or addiction work. All programmes include group work. However, the prison also recognises the need for individual support through one-to-one -one sessions with workers, psychologists and social workers. Additionally, during the tour, Prison officers described how they provided opportunities for prisoners to learn basic skills which they may otherwise be lacking in. Basic skills taught could include things such as cooking, budgeting money and unblocking drains. It was also discussed that the prison also provides SVQ levels in cooking, cleaning, joinery as well as college courses and the chance to study through Open University. However, Achieving these educational qualifications does take longer in prison than it would for an individual living outside in the community. For example, it may take an individual within the community one year or less to achieve their SVQ level in cleaning. However, it could take four or more years in prison. 
to try and tackle stereotypes and stigmas held against offenders by wider society, the prison is beginning to set up links within the community and is beginning to invite more people from within the community to visit the prison. I personally believe that this is a positive movement towards tackling discrimination felt by the public. However, it also pre presents the ethical dilemma of a right to privacy which some prisoners may feel is jeopardised due to this action. Activities discussed which are available to prisoners include access to pool tables, the gym, a small library, a games hall and a computer room. Prisoners may also choose to engage in art therapy or woodwork which acts in reparation to the community. For example, during our visit, we walked through the wood workshop and saw the items which prisoners were working on to provide schools with, such as benches. Items can also be provided to the local council. Prisoners complete these jobs more cheaply than other companies would and thus act to give back to the community indirectly. I feel, however, that these actions are often hidden by the public system and the press whereas the wider public should also become more aware of what prisoners are doing positively for their local communities. When touring around the prison, our class noticed that there is a high emphasis on building relationships within the prison between prisoners and prison officers to create a less formal environment and power imbalance relationship. Prisoners and workers are encouraged to communicate on a first name basis thus showing professionals upholding values such as respect towards prisoners and also unconditional positive regard. On another positive note, the prison is starting to, uh, to link up with businesses in the community and aim to help prisoners gain employment upon release. For example, communicating actively with companies such as Timpstons, which regularly seek ex-offenders and provide them with employment opportunities. Furthermore, education can continue beyond the term of the um, prison sentence, which acts as key to getting prisoners out of the poverty cycle, which they may experience prior to and after their prison sentence. In conclusion, I feel that students who attended the Dumfries prison visit found it very beneficial and allowed for us to understand more in depth how the prison service works within Dumfries and Galloway to promote public safety whilst also balancing and ensuring prisoners' rights to participation. This visit reminded me of a quote I once read by Deepak Copra, which states, Every time you are tempted to react in the same old way, Ask yourself if you want to be a prisoner of the past or a pioneer of the future. I feel that Dumfries Prison works hard to provide hope to prisoners for a better future. The question is, is this choice always as simple and black and white as we originally think? Thank you for listening.